What is up everybody, this is your boy, and I'm here bringing you a small guide on how to get a controller to work for Dead Rising 2 on the PC. Now, if you've ever gone to the options here and you've had your controller plugged in or you're connected to your computer in some way, and you go down to PC settings and you hit enter and you see your controller is grayed out, um, that is probably because you're not using a wired 360 controller. It's the only one that is actually compatible with the game by default, and it's not a remastered version so that's why it doesn't detect the the uh xbox one because when this came out there was no xbox one controller so it's not going to detect it. it's only going to detect a 360 wired controller or one connected using the play and charge kit but if you're like me or if you're going to be like me and have a Xbox 360 wireless receiver, there is a way around this. And it's using a third party uh, software. And unfortunately, there's no way to use an Xbox One controller with this. At least this is not as far as I've tried. Um, I've used the program with the, three, with the one controller and I still could not get it to work. So to get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously get yourself your 360 controller and your wireless receiver. And if you have a wired controller, you can just probably plug it in play. It should work. Um, but if not, if you have a uh, wireless receiver like I have, you're going to need one program. And that is uploaded to my Google Drive. This is the right version. It's a 32-bit version of 360 CE. It has to be 32-bit since the game itself is 32-bit. And this is the correct version to use. There is a newer version of 360 CE, but it does not work with Dead Rising 2. So what you're going to need to do is you need to download this. I'll include the link in the description. So just look below and then you're going to want to find the file in your downloads and then you're going to want to, or, or you're just going to need to unpack it because it's a RAR file or is it file? So unpack it and put it into your dead rising folder. So where your dead rising folder is, if you go to this PC, you're going to need to go to local disk C program files 86. If this is your standard steam folder location, if it's not, you need to go find where that is. Um, Steam, you're going to want to go to Steam Apps, Common, Dead Rising 2. And in here, you're going to drop the 360ce.exe file into here. And before we open this, we do need to set up our 360 controller. Now, when you plug in your 360 wireless receiver, the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to set it up. Now, before on like the when Windows 7 you used to have to download files for uh the wireless receiver and then you would go into and do all this stuff. But luckily Windows 10 and 11 seem to have come with it because I've not installed it on this computer and it still works. Now if you try to connect it right off the bat, it's not going to work. What you need to do is you need to go to your type to search down here and look up device manager. So now that you looked up device manager, you're going to click on that. And in here, you should see a thing that says unknown device. And that's what this is right here. It should be the 360 wireless receiver. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and we're going to go to properties. And on here, you're going to go to driver, update driver, browse my computer for drivers. And right here, it says, let me pick from a list of available drivers on my computer. You're going to go ahead and select that. And it's going to give you a bunch of options here. You're going to scroll all the way down until you find Xbox. So you're going to see Xbox peripherals and Xbox 60 peripherals. You're going to want to choose the 360 one. Go ahead and double click it. And on here, you're going to be presented with three options. 360 controller for Windows, 360 wireless controller via play and charge kit, and 360 wireless receiver for Windows. You're going to select the wireless receiver for Windows and you're going to hit next. And then it's going to give you an update driver warning. You're going to hit yes. And then boom, successfully installed. So now if I turn on my controller and then I would, I didn't even need to press the sync. It's already synced. But anyway, now that you got your 360 CE into here, Dead Rising's root folder here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click it and you're going to go to run as administrator because this will not, I, I can't get it to work unless I run it as administrator. So go ahead and do that. And up here, you're going to be, you're going to see all of these fun little options here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I already had it set up for my one controller. That's when I was doing tests and it didn't work. So don't even bother with it. Um, so anyway, here, I'm not sure if this is important. I keep it here at the 360 CE.exe. Um, I do have the Dead Rising 2 setup, but it never really stays at that. 
And then what you're going to want to do is when you have uh, the 360 controller emulator on there, you're going to want to hit add. And also when you first open this up, it's probably going to ask you to uh, have a couple files on here. So like, let's say I were to go to my, oh, it's not even in there, whatever. But it, it'll probably ask you to create a couple files. Oops, and I didn't, I, I, I screwed that one up. Sorry. We're going to need to run this as administrator every time. Because it needs to make, uh, yeah, there we go, administrator. It'll say administrator after the name there if you actually have it running as administrator. You're going to want to add your controller here. So what you're going to do is you're going to press add. And then on here, you get presented with a list of options. And you're just going to want to um, highlight the one that you want in there. So I want my 360 for Windows in there. You're going to add selected device. And that should pop up right there. And it has to be selected and be blue when you're adding it. So like you actually have to like click on it and make sure it's blue when you're adding it. So what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to set everything up. So mine already seems to be set up. But you can do this easily by just setting up what you see here. So your trigger, you're going to hit record and you're going to hit your left trigger there. Um, bumper, obviously bumper. Back button, you'll set that one up. Your start button, you'll set that one up. And then for your D-pad, don't worry about that one. That one will be set when you're doing this down here. So here you have your stick axis X. These are the only the only two you need to set on this one is stick axis X and stick axis Y. We're going to go ahead and record and we're going to press that to the right and then record stick axis Y and it's going to give you a little up arrow. You're going to want to go up like this. So now if I move my stick, you can see that little plus sign going around and around and around. Um, D-pad up. We're going to go ahead and press up on that and that should give us up and then on here you're going to want to do d-pad left and it's going to you'll see the red arrow blink and that's the one you need to press on your controller so d-pad down and then over here we have the right trigger the right bumper the y button the b button or the x button here the b button and the a button and then on this one you're going to want to do the same thing so you just one to the right and then stick axis Y, you're going to go. And then your stick buttons, you're going to want to set these two. So that's right stick. And then over here, you have a left stick. So now when we click on those, it should detect it as being a button. Everything seems to be working just fine. Just kind of make sure it's detecting it in the program. Every button, every button. And you see it's, it's perfectly setting it. You do not need to set the guide. The guide is, it actually won't even pick it up. So don't even worry about that. So once you have that all set up, you can probably save all, but honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. So now that you have this set up, you should be able to start Dead Rising 2. So we're going to go ahead and start Dead Rising 2. And when you're in the game, it should let you press start and actually bypass the main menu, but it's not going to let you select anything. That's how you know if it's working or not. And unfortunately, this is the sad truth of the game. You have to have a 360 controller. You can't use anything else, unfortunately. And if you can, please, by all means, make a guide. <laughs> but I've looked, I've scoured the internet, cannot find anything. But do you see, I press start there and it's actually working now. And if you go down to PC settings here, if it's not working, if it can get you into the menu, but it's not letting you select random things on the menu. You need to enable your controller through PC settings in the options menu. And here we have it set to enable. So now we can use a controller. And that is how you set up a controller for Dead Rising 2. It, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But when, if you have the stuff, you know, it's good. The game's not bad with your mouse and keyboard. It's just significantly better with a controller. It's meant for a controller. It was made for the 360. So you are definitely going to want to have a controller. And... You know, if you can get past not having a controller, then you know all the power to you. But me personally, Dead Rising 2 is a controller game all the way. But anyway, hopefully this helps, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Woo!